have been a part of Speedtree for a really long time. Using the procedural options, you could hang stalks, curl tendrils, and interact with objects using geometry forces. For Speedtree 10, we've added an all-new generator for vines that allows the lightweight physics computation. This new feature lets you swag and swoop, instantly pull vines along the floor or over walls, draped masses and overrun structures. You can even use them as roots or extensions on branches. We suspect to be using them for just about everything. The vine generator can be found in your regular list of templates. It's actually identical to your branch or tube. The only difference is it has this extra tab named Droop. Droop is where you can set the physics and looks of these instant vines. Right now, the style is set to on, so it's pinned in this imaginary place in the air and it's falling to the ground. The pin area is very smart for getting started. It helps you pin them to the tree or start them on the ground. If I unpin the start and end, we actually have one that's fallen to the ground. The ground is so bouncy right now that it looks like it's still pinned, but it's actually bouncing off the ground and going up. This is because of the ground's friction. You can make adjustments to the ground, turn off the friction so there's no bouncing, and you can adjust this tube um, stiffness also. This is going to make it uh, easier to do things like drape from tree to tree. Let's show you what this looks like on the tree itself. I've got a pre-made tree in here just so that we can quickly add and go with this. Let's pick the branch that we would like to add to. We're going to add our vine. I guess I didn't need to delete it. I could have just added it from there. You'll see immediately that this is pinned in the branch and so it's going to um, come off those two places. It's also not welded, so when you go into the skin tab, I want to make this look a little bit more vine-like by adjusting the radius. It's not um, welded, and that is actually very intentional. If you were to weld these and have them turned around to the other side of the branch, you might have some weirdness because they're going to fall very, very drastically. So if you do have your welds on, you want to make sure you have a lot of polys in the weld area to um, help ease the, the weight of the droop. Now let's go ahead and turn that off, and I'll show you a little bit how this works. Let's go back to our droop settings. You can see my start angle is pushing this out a little bit. If I were to add some more droop to the tree, I can make it fall even harder down on the ground. Right now, I don't want it to end back in another tree, so I'm going to turn end off, and you'll see it's on the ground. Now, these, like everyday branches, if you want them to have more of a pattern after they hit the ground, you're going to have to do something like go in and add um, some differences in here. So maybe add some directional differences, like parent curl, or go in and add noise. Uh, the early noise has the more potential to make it fall off the ground and bounce back up. So if you're adding early noise, you're going to get a wilder branch. If you add late noise, you're going to get a lot more side-to-side -side swirly action going on on the ground, which is really, really helpful for these puddling vines. Let's take a look at um, the other option for vines. We have a hand-drawn section in here. If this is selected on, you have the option of adding points and moving your vine's pens around. Um, let's show you how I like to approach this. On the vine itself, you're going to right-click. You're going to convert this to hand-drawing. And you're going to go to the freehand mode. The freehand mode is where all of our hand-drawing stuff ended up. You might want to do this with the vine turned off, but um, for the sake, we just want to see what it looks like. Um, the first thing I like to do is switch to the hand drawing tab. I'm going to redistribute some of these points, but I actually just want a few points. I want two pins on the tree, so I'm going to leave myself one on the end and um, the middle there. Now I can take this point and pin the area that I'd like into the tree itself, as well as the end point. Now we can go back to the droop. We're going to go back to generator mode, and I'm going to turn this dial on. And you can see that I've got two pinpoints. If I go back into that mode and need to move this around to, to make sure it actually pins to the tree, um, we can do this in the screen space, but to move those points around to get them exactly where you want them. 
If you add too many branches to the tree, hand pinning each point might be a little cumbersome. Which brings us to our next method. The fastest way to set up vines along a tree, here I've got an example where it opens straight from a library. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the second tier of branches and offset the material. I want this to look like the vines have overtaken the bottom of the tree. With that set up, I can now add the vine generator. I'm going to grab that second set as well, this is just the main branches. I'm going to add the vine to the scene. We're going to head to droop and go ahead and turn off the end. We're just going to pin it into the tree itself. I'm going to switch that vine material real fast so it's a little easier to see. I'm going to put on vine and just for a second we're going to make this neon pink. Red. <laughs> so we'll take the vines and we want to hide the fact that we're not actually pinning these vines. So in the droop, if you were to add steps right now, you'll see that they aren't connecting to anything. In the bottom of the tree where I have it bare, I really don't want the swoops. In the top of the tree where the leaves cover and hide where the connection points are, I can keep the droops. To do that, I'm going to take this curve here and say that along the trunk, I don't want any swoops on the bottom. So I'm going to put a point there and I'm going to put a zero in. We're going to type that just so it's like happy. And this is just what we call getting creative with curves. And now we have hanging and then we have hidden. Um, so this is a very solid strategy for when you don't want to take very much time to set up the tree. If you add in another layer, of course, you can just duplicate these and end up making a mix of looks and varieties. In this last section, I'm going to go over a bunch of different techniques that you can use to layer in vines and add that extra chaos. There's no right or wrong way to do these workflows, but here are some options. I pulled two trees into the scene, and now we're going to convert one of my branches to hand drawing. After it's converted, if you head to freehand mode, I hit tab to switch over to that just by the way. If you hold down the space bar, you should see a white gizmo, and that will let you drag into the shape that you need. Right now I'm going to connect to the trunk down there, and then I need to edit my points into space. By grabbing and adjusting the green dots and straighten them out, I can redistribute if I need to, like if I tangle this up and I need to actually fix it, hitting the redistribute button will help um, get those back in line. I adjusted the radius just now, and we're going to go ahead and shape and make sure they're pinned to the other side of the trunk. Now that I have everything where I like it, I am going to go ahead and simply add the vine generator. We're going to click on the branch that we just drew, add it from the templates, and we're going to increase the frequency on the branch. So for this, I'm changing the radius in order to make it fit the vine itself, and then I'm going to increase the generation tab. We're going to do just add a couple of those on there. Now, to make these appear um, like they're coming off in different points, I'm changing the first and last. I'm changing the style so I could put a few more on the tree. And the last thing I'm adding is a bunch of variants. So in the um, grip and start angle, I also like to add in the rotation and position just to pull those around in different directions. And now we have some delicately organic looking swoopy things going on there. And then on the segment tabs, you can increase uh, the segments if you need, if they're looking a little bit sharp. You can see there, I've got some bouncing off the ground and going back up in the air. Um, so we can go back to our droop settings and use the curve. So I can use the curve on along that branch for the end to lift them back up if I want a scraggly look or if I want them to be more um, wild. Or I can take the end of the branch and pull them way up or way down. 
we're gonna take this main branch that we made and make it into a force mesh and we're gonna use that to pull a section of branches all around down it I'm gonna go ahead and add a set of branches these are gonna be the ones that will crawl I'm gonna just push these up towards the start so I've just generating a couple and pushing them towards the end of the branch to the left hand side of the tree by pushing the first to zero and pushing the last down to point two ish decided i needed a couple more of those so i'm increasing the frequency just to go ahead and set us up there I turn the welds off just so that they will be able to crawl very extremely we're gonna set that curve up now we're gonna right click we're going to make a geometry force from the selected. We're going to name this geometry force vine leader. Click on that second set of branches. We're also going to go to the forces tab and turn them on. We're going to need to set the um, pass to two in the generation tab. That makes sure that that computes after that first one grows. And then when you go back to the forces tab, we're going to change that curve. So along this branch, I want the entire part of the vine to be maxed out so that the whole thing follows. I'm going to mega speed up a bit as I do some adjustments on the force to get those branches to follow along the vine. I adjusted the force settings tab themselves and made the um, vines follow all the way along. I made that profile curve positive. I changed the start angle. And I did some curve settings on there just to get these exactly how I want. Right there, that adjustment to how much they follow made a little bit of a loop, which is kind of fun. And we're going to also speed up. So I already had some vines growing up on the left side of the scene. So all I did was copy paste and add some short branches in there so I could have these going down our naturally forming lines to ground. I added them in two different sections. I added some droop on those. Um, and now we are ready for the next step. For this, I just added a couple more vines in the top part of the tree, just like we did before. Increased the variance. I increased the droop amount so they would hit the floor in this different manner. And on those, I let the stiffness go down and adjusted how many droops I had going on there. They're a little um, all over the place. Also, just like that previous step, I adjusted the droops by hand changing to hand drawing and pinning them into place. Next, I'm gonna add a fallen trunk to the scene. I'm gonna add a branch generator. I'm gonna change the radius on this. I'm hitting the screen space keys W, E, R to trigger the um, little gizmo in the screen that lets you move this around. This is a node edit, so I'm actually just moving this branch around into position. Um, now that I've got it shaped the way I like it, um, I can zoom it around the screen and kind of place it. I want this to look like a fallen branch, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over on its side and pretend to lean it up, um, make it a little bit longer changing the start angle. I added some broken branches, textured this thing, added caps, bottoms, parts. And then we have our finished fallen log. I duplicated our vine. I put it on a zone and scooted it over to that main branch. And I used it as a guide as well. So the um, large piece, you right click and make that a geometry force. And now your vines can interact with that as well. I used a direction for this to pull it up. So sometimes with the geometry forces, you needed to clear um, a lead so they can go to one thing to the other. And that force direction actually helps it pull those vines up the branch. You can add even more layers, even more rolls there. I'm adding some noise along the ground, adjusting the colors, and we have a very delightfully layered piece with a thousand generators in it. But it really, really helps to layer these in to make them look extra, extra organic um, at the end of the day. 
brings us to the end of this guide. Thanks for watching.